In today's video, we are going to talk about this guy. This is a Matfer carbon steel crate pan. We are going to quickly run through its stats and features. We're going to cook some crepes. It's carbon steel. Maybe we'll try and slide an egg. And then we're going to really drill down on specifically how to season a Matfer carbon steel skillet. I'm going to go through that in step-by-step -step detail. Let's get started. Hi guys and welcome to Uncle Scott's Kitchen. The star of today's show is this Matfer carbon steel crepe pan. This is the nine and a half inch model. Mine actually measured in at about nine and a quarter inches. There's always a little bit of wiggle room with these European pans, though. I think they go from metric to English, and it's never quite as precise as you think it might be. So nine and a half inches wide, about seven and a half inches of cooking surface, about 18 inches tip to tail, and it weighs in at just a little over two pounds. So this pan is pretty small and pretty light, and I don't think anybody will have much trouble moving this thing around. And it's light enough you might even try to flip crepe. We'll see how that goes here in just a minute. It's got a strip steel uncoated handle and map for handles are not going to win any design awards. They say right on the label that map for pans are made for the food service industry. As such they are a little bit more geared towards functionality for kind of back of the house. Actual chefs use these in restaurants compared to some of the other fancier pans we review around here. They're not quite as good looking, but that's okay though, because what they lack in looks, they make up for in value and performance for the money. Speaking of which, I paid about $23 for this pan a couple of weeks ago. Right before I did this video, I checked again, and now they've moved up there between $40 and $45. Um, I think at $23, that is a screaming bargain. You get a ton of performance for the money at $23. $40, $45 or so, still solid. If it were much more than $50, I'd be a little bit hesitant. You can kind of get into some of the fancier pans with a little bit better looks when you start getting above $50. Now this is a crepe pan. Let's compare it to a couple of its older brothers here. This is a 10 inch Matfer frying pan. And you notice that although they have about the same width edge to edge, this one has a taller sidewall and a smaller cooking surface. This has a smaller sidewall and a wider cooking surface. As we know, crates are relatively flat and wide, and that low sidewall helps you get a crepe turner and crepe spatula underneath there and flip your crepes. Now let's go ahead and jump in and do a little cooking here. We're gonna cook some crepes. Now, if you don't know what a crepe is, if you drew a line from pancake to omelet, the crepe would be somewhere sort of in between. The batter is very simple, some flour, some vanilla, some sugar, some salt, and an egg, and some milk, and some butter. I'll put a link to some recipes below. And here I want to give a shout out to my wife. In a lot of my videos, I will make the occasional crack about her cooking, but when it comes to crepes, she has an A plus crepe game. Now not to get too far into the weeds, but my little son, had an egg allergy when he was an infant. He's grown out of it, but it's important to get him to keep eating eggs so that nothing regresses there. He doesn't like scrambled eggs. He does like crepes though. So a year and a half or so ago, my wife started making crepes twice a week and she's become really good at it. Amazingly, the more you practice at something, the better you get at it. Now what I want to call it here is that this pan is new. It does not look shiny, dark black like this other mat for frying pan. You've seen in some other videos, but that is okay. I want to pound this point home that a pan, a carbon steel skillet, does not have to be shiny jet black to cook nicely. Let's see how it works here with these crepes. Got the pan heating up. We're going to use butter. My wife is pouring in some crepe batter. Notice how it sizzles. Let it go for a minute. She's going to use a traditional crepe spatula. Slide that under there to flip it. And watch this. Non-stick. 
The pan is not shiny, it's not dark, it's not jet black, but it is non-stick. First time we've used it. Cooking a bunch more grapes here, and it is still non-stick. And we made batch after batch of these things. I would have shown a big plate of nice, fancy, decorated crepes, but I actually ate five crepes in a row, one after the other, as she cooked them. <laughs> made some more. These actually turned out even better. Here she got a little bit confident and decided she was going to flip one. Here is where that long handle and lightweight pan come into play. And... Not too bad. So shout out to my wife for making those crepes. And if you're selling a crepe pan and it makes delicious non-stick crepes, I think it gets a thumbs up right there, right? Now this is carbon steel and carbon steel we always show sliding an egg. Normally I would not use this pan for eggs. I've got the pan heating up, got some butter in there, crack my egg and the egg goes and Boom! Nailed it. First try, first egg I have cooked in that pan, sliding around like the proverbial hockey puck. Tastes a little bit better. And, oh yeah, even nailed the flip. Now what I want to continue to pound home is that that pan is not jet black, shiny, edge to edge, like some of the ones you see on the internet. But we've got non-stick crepes, non-stick eggs, within two hours of me giving that pan its initial seasoning. So you can season a pan over and over nine zillion times if you want to and turn it into a work of art, a shiny black work of art, but you don't have to do it. I think your time is much better spent cooking. Would you rather season a pan for six or seven hours or eat delicious crepes? I'd rather eat delicious food. So the Mapfer nine and a half inch carbon steel crepe pan gets a thumbs up. And now I want to dive into that seasoning a little bit more. If you're already a pro with your carbon steel, this might not be as valuable to you. But if you're new, if you've had any kind of trouble seasoning a mat for carbon steel skillet, we're going to dive into that seasoning in depth now. So at a high level, what is seasoning and why do you need to do it? Carbon steel is a reactive metal. It's kind of sort of similar to cast iron in that if you get it wet, it will rust. You shouldn't use really acidic ingredients in it. It can make your food take on a little bit of a metallic taste. And when these things are manufactured, most of the ones we review around here are manufactured in Europe. From the time those things are manufactured to the time they show up at your house in the United States or wherever you happen to be, lots of things can happen. There can be moisture, they could be in shipping containers on a ship in the middle of the ocean warehouses, trucks, who knows what goes on with those things. But if there's any kind of moisture, the pans can rust in that shipping process. As such, most manufacturers put a coating on their carbon steel skillets. It protects them from any kind of rust or any kind of issues from the time they are manufactured to the time the consumer receives the pan. Now around here, there are several brands of carbon steel pans that we really like. We like the Bouillets, we like Mobiles, we like Lodges, and we really like the Mapfers. And on a molecular basis, the molecules of carbon steel are going to be pretty similar from pan to pan. But there are differences in the way you give these pans their initial cleanings and seasonings. And that has to do with the type of coating the companies apply at their factories. They're not all the same. So typically, a Moviel or a Debouillet pan, carbon steel, will ship with a coating of beeswax. So the pans that are shipped with beeswax, the manufacturers typically want you to remove most, but not all of that beeswax, so leave a little bit on there. And when you season the pan, they think that helps jumpstart that seasoning layer. Now, mapfers are different. Why are mapfers different? because they do not use beeswax, they use a different type of protective coating from the factory. And as such, they ask you to kind of go the extra mile to remove all of that protective coating down to the bare metal and then build your seasoning up from there. And they ask you to use what we call the mat for method to remove that coating. Now you don't have to do this with the other brands of pants. This is mat for specific only. 
And I should also point out that this is only for the initial cleaning and seasoning. When you're going to reseason your pan two weeks a month, wherever down the road, when you do subsequent seasonings, you don't have to do this initial seasoning. So it drives people crazy. They think they have to do this every time. No, you do not have to do this every time. But what MAPFR wants you to do, the MAPFR method, calls for scrubbing the pan really well with dish soap and hot water. And I want to point out here, you can do this if you want to, if you want to see the coating on the pan, scrub half the pan first and wash it and look very closely at it. You'll be able to see where you've removed the coating on there. You have to look really closely. But I am scrubbing this pan. I'm just scrubbing the heck out of it with Dawn dish soap, a blue scrubby sponge, and I'm using the scrubby side. And I'm also using a little bit of a plastic brush. Really just scrubbing the heck out of this pan. Probably spent a good five minutes scrubbing as much of that protective coat off as I could. The next step is to dry the pan and then put it on a stove top. And what you want to do here is slowly heat the pan up. And as it is heating, we're going to add oil. And for oil, I am just using good old standard Crisco vegetable oil. If you're new, if you're getting started on these things, don't go out and buy some fancy exotic oil. Remove one variable from the equation. Just stay within the herd and just use Crisco or some sort of big name, big box. Vegetable oil, canola oil, you can use grapeseed, you can use sunflower. But pick one of those four oils. The easiest thing in the world is just to use some Crisco vegetable oil and not worry about it. Get that salt, that oil, those potato peels, saute those. The directions say to saute those for 15 minutes. So yes, I stood in one place and stirred potato peels, oil, and salt for 15 minutes. Now towards the end, the pan is going to get really, really hot. It's going to smoke a little bit. You may need to turn on the vent. I opened a door and a window to get some of that odor out of the house. And guess what? The directions say once that is done, wipe the pan out and to do it again. So yes, we're going to do this a second time. Another batch of oil, salt, and potato skins. And another 15 minutes of stirring. Good Lord. And once that's done, wipe it out again with paper towels. Then the directions say to Again, bring the temperature up to heat with some oil in the pan, which I did, and then wipe it out. And I wiped it until it looked as dry as I could get it with paper towels. Ended up using about a half a roll of paper towels to season this pan. But that's it. And then it is ready to go. I note that at pretty high temperatures here, this pan started out flat and was at high temperature on this flat top for at least 30 minutes and it did not warp or turn into a spinner so I like that. Now at this point this pan is still relatively shiny and silvery. There's a little bit of color coming in just a hint of brown and some golden color on there. It is nowhere near one of these others. Now it's a free country or at least it was but if you want to, you can stand there and season this thing over and over and over, spend several hours doing that and turn it into a jet black, shiny work of art pan. You can follow that other method on the internet where they season these things over and over in the oven five, six times. That takes about three hours per seasoning. Spend 18 hours on your pan. I implore you not to do that. Why? We showed that this pan, after just doing this, essentially 45 minutes of work, was non-stick. The crepes didn't stick. The first egg we fried in this thing, it slid like a hockey puck. You don't have to do all that other seasoning stuff to get your pan working and cooking nicely and producing non-stick results. You just don't have to do it. I think your time is better spent learning your new pan, learning how to cook at it, and especially eating delicious food. I would much rather eat some delicious crepes and fried eggs than season my pan for hours and hours and hours. Further, when you're new, you're gonna mess something up. We all do. I typically forget that something has an acidic ingredient in there. I'll mess up my seasoning from time to time. I have to re-season it. Are you gonna spend all these hours and hours and hours re-seasoning your pan? I hope not.
Season once, follow the directions, give it that initial cleaning and seasoning, get it done right the first time, and then just start cooking. Cook, cook, cook more and season less. If your seasoning needs to be touched up down the road, just touch it up and keep on cooking. And don't worry about turning your pan into a shiny black work of art when you're new. <laughs> so for the Mapfer nine and a half inch carbon steel crepe pan, it produced delicious non-stick crepes after the initial seasoning, very good quality carbon steel. Also used it to slide an egg, got some great non-stick performance on this thing. Seems like a really great value. I like it a lot and I give it a thumbs up. Now look somewhere on the screen for links to other videos you might enjoy. Leave your questions, comments, and feedback below. I'll do my best to answer some of those. Look for shopping links should you want to get one of these for yourself. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time. Uncle Scott's Kitchen.